Welcome back everyone, we're on chapter 5 of the Midnight Gang. Last episode we were introduced to the horrid matron, so let's see what happens in the next episode. This is chapter 5, Pink Frilly Night Dress Boy. Matron launched into what seemed like a very well rehearsed speech, a speech that she must have given to all her new patients. Now, young man, this is my ward, and these are my rules. Lights out at 8pm, sharp. No talking after lights out, no reading under the covers, no eating of sweets. If I do hear the rustle of sweet papers in the dark, I will confiscate them on the spot. Yes, that includes you, George. The podgy boy immediately stopped chewing and kept his mouth tightly shut so Matron couldn't see he was chewing a chocolate at that very moment. The woman continued at pace, her words snapped like the crack of a whip. No getting out of bed, no visits to the toilet during the night. That is what a bedpan is for. You will find a bedpan under your bed. There is a bell on your wall by your head. Ring the bell in the night only in an absolute emergency. Do you understand me? Uh, yes, re replied Tom. It was like being told off before you'd actually done anything wrong. Now, have you brought any pyjamas with you? she asked. Uh, n no, replied Tom. I, I, I must have been rushed here in an ambulance when I was knocked out on the, on the cricket pitch. Uh, I, I don't have a chance, I didn't have a chance to pack anything. So I've, um, I've just got my cricket kit that I came in. I, I don't mind sleeping in that. Matron's lips curled in horror. Repulsive child! You are as bad as that disgusting excuse for a human being, the porter. He smells like he sleeps in his clothes. Ha <laughs> ha Can we call your parents to bring you some pyjamas? Tom shook his head sorrowfully. Well, why not? M my mother and father live abroad. Where? The boy hesitated before answering. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. You are sure said matron loudly so everyone could hear it was if she wanted all the children in the ward to enjoy the new boy being humiliated as as much as she did they they move around a lot from for my father's work i know it's somewhere in the desert well that narrows it down she snarled sarcastically you don't even know what country your own parents are in. Well, you will fit in right here. The children in these wards are all the ones who parents don't ever visit for one reason or another. They're either too poor to travel like Amber's, or too ill like Robin's, or live too far away like Sally's. George has the best reason though. Would you care to explain why your parents never visit George? No, nah, the boy muttered in his cockney accent. The accent struck Tom. As no one in the build boarding school talked like George, the poor boy looked desperately embarrassed. Don't. George's father is in prison for robbery no less. So if anything goes missing in the wards, we'll know who to blame like father, like son. <laughs> I ain't no thief shouted George. No need to be sensitive, child. It's only my little joke. Well, it ain't funny, he replied. Ooh, she added mockingly. I've touched a nerve. No, I have an idea for you, Tom. Let me find you something to wear in my lost property box. With a glint in her eye, Matron turned on her heel and disappeared into her office. Moments later, she emerged with her hands behind her back and a suspicious grin on her face. I am awfully sad to say, Tom, that I don't have any pyjamas to fit you, she said. So you'll just have to wear this. From behind her back, Matron produced a pink frilly nightdress. The smug grin on her face became even smugger. Tom looked at the pink frilly nightdress with horror. If the other boys in the boarding school ever heard about him wearing it, he would never ever live it down. In fact, he would forever be known as Pink Frilly Nightdress Boy. Uh, please, just, just let me keep my cricket gear on, Matron, pleaded Tom. 
I said, no, snapped Matron. I've got pyjamas you can borrow, said George. Don't be ridiculous, child, replied the lady in a fash. Look at the size of you, boy. They'll be far too big. Your pyjamas would be big on an elephant. <laughs> Once again, nobody laughed except Matron. Now get this on right away or I'll report you to the principal of the hospital, Sir Quentin Strillers. He would take a very dim view of a boy like you and he could have you thrown out onto the street, said the lady, as she whisked the curtains around the boy's bed. She stayed on the outside, leaving Tom to try and wiggle out of his clothes and into the nightdress on his own. Quickly, ordered the matron. I I'm, I'm nearly there. Said, called out Tom as he pulled the thing over his head. Uh, okay, he said, even though he felt far from okay. Matron then whisked the curtains back to reveal Tom. There stood pink frilly nightdress boy in all his pink frilly nightdress glory. Actually, he suits you, said George. I so wish I could see it, murmured Robin. No. You don't, replied Amber. And that's the end of chapter five. Chapter six, up to no good. So we've just started to get introduced to all the characters. George seems like a funny one. A Cockney Londoner who's too too big for his pyjamas. We'll have to see what happens in the next episode. Thank you for coming along. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.